President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi instructed on Tuesday to intensify training programs for government's workers and cadres on using modern scientific ways in administration within the framework of the government's transition to the new administrative capital with the aim of promoting the government's performance and services offered to citizens. During his meeting with Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli, Minister of Communications and Information Technology Amr Talat and Minister of Housing and Urban Communities Asma Ghazar, the head of state, said such training would realize mutual benefits for both citizens and the state through offering promoted governmental apparatus to undergo dealings in light of the digital transformation for the state. Presidential spokesman Bassem Rodi said the meeting tackled preparation efforts ahead of transferring the government's headquarters to the new administrative capital, including te technological apparatus and closed communications networks of the governmental district. The meeting also probed ongoing efforts to promote human capabilities through human developments package, trainings and skills building, as well as operating new information systems and the electronic archive for documents. President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received on Tuesday the U.S. Secretary of Treasury, Stephen Turner Munchen, in the presence of Minister of Finance, Mohammed Maid as well as Chief of the General Intelligence, General Abbas Kamil. Presidential spokesman Bassem Rodi said the head of state sent his greetings to U.S. President Donald Trump, appreciating his role in boosting bilateral relations. For his part, Munchen conveyed Trump's greetings to his Sisi, expressing his country's appreciation to the strategic relations between the two countries. In light of the political weight that Egypt enjoys in the Middle East, which contributes to achieving balance in the region, praising in this context Egypt's rational stances under the leadership of President Sisi. Also on Tuesday, President Sisi received Ambassador Annan Kato, the Special Envoy of the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Akufu Addo, in the presence of Minister of Finance, Mohamed Maid, as well as Head of the General Intelligence, Abbas Kemil. Presidential spokesman Bassem Rodi said the meeting witnessed the signing of a number of cooperation agreements between Egypt and Ghana in the fields of trade and investment, as well as the exchange of experiences regarding tackling the repercussions of the coronavirus. The meeting also centered on Egypt's role in supporting Ghana's efforts in development by transmitting its comprehensive development experiences. Kato expressed his honor to meet President Sisi as he conveyed greetings of Ghana's president, hailing the historic and deep relations that bind the two nations, as well as the special position Ghana enjoys for Egyptians. He pointed to Egypt's keenness to strengthen its relations with Ghana. Prime Minister Mustafa Madbouli said there is daily following up on the oxygen stocks across hospitals around the clock confirming that there is enough oxygen reserves in all governorates. Medbuli also said there is nearly 500 hospitals providing services to COVID-19 patients. According to the Prime Minister, the state is, is exerting tremendous efforts to counter the global pandemic and that medical staff are heroically fulfilling their duties. He said the state is monitoring the implementation of precautionary measures, on top of which wearing masks at public and crowded places. Medbuli expressed appreciation for medical staff fighting the pandemic. Foreign Minister Sameh Shukri arrived home on Tuesday after participating in a summit aimed at resolving a three-year embargo against Qatar. The Gulf states signed an agreement on regional solidarity and stability at the summit. Saudi Arabia and its allies have restored full relations with Qatar after a landmark summit ending a damaging rift that erupted in 2017. Leaders of the six-member Gulf Corporation Council signed two documents, the Al-Ula Declaration and a final communique. They are general in terms. However, Saudi Arabia's Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman said the agreement affirms Gulf Arab and Islamic solidarity and stability. He called for unity to confront challenges facing the region 
singling out the threats posed by Iran's nuclear and ballistic missile program and its plans for sabotage and destruction. Thanking the United States and Kuwait for mediating, the Saudi's crown prince said such efforts have helped reach the agreement of the Al-Ula statement. Prince Mohammed extended an enthusiastic welcome to Qatar Sheikh Tamim bin Hamad Al Thani after the Emir landed in the kingdom for the first time since the crisis began. For his part, Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan hailed the agreement as a turning of the page on all points of difference and a full return of diplomatic relations. In press remarks, Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abul Ghait hailed the agreement and reconciliation efforts being exerted, saying the agreement adds a great deal to the Arab regional and national security. Kuwait on Monday announced that Saudi Arabia would reopen its airspace and borders to Qatar under a deal on the sidelines of the summit. Egypt joined Saudi Arabia, the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain in severing diplomatic trade and travel ties with Qatar in 2017 over allegation it supports terrorism, a charge Doha denies. The Ministry of Health has started an initiative to follow up on home quarantined COVID-19 cases, part of the 100 million health lives initiative. The ministry said the initiative includes following up on the cases diagnosed as positive either by ministry, hospitals or by private doctors. It said special medical teams visit homes to record the data of the cases on the electronic system. 800 vehicles are dedicated for medical convoys to regions with high infection rates. On Monday, Minister of Health Dr. Helezaid reviewed the electronic system through which oxygen consumption rates at all hospitals are being monitored. The minister noted that data are, is being updated every six hours. She said there is keenness on providing enough oxygen stock, part of new COVID-19 treatment protocols, as it improves the health condition of patients and contributes to lowering death rates among patients.